It's our girl, Courtney. Now we're gonna learn why we're toxic. Okay, not just us, men and women. We're gonna learn why men and women are toxic. All right. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And today I have another roundup of some TikToks for all of you guys that I think Ooh, you my all favorite enjoy. TikToks. So I've had some people send me these, others I have scouted on my own on TikTok. So stick with me until the end because if I have to go through this, you have to go through this. So let's wow, get started. That's this is rude. just one little video and it's a TikTok. So people post a ton of TikToks just because I don't agree with this one doesn't mean that all of their content is bad or I think they're a horrible person. Now, there have been TikToks I reacted to that maybe didn't paint the person in the best light, but that's mm. not my fault. What you put online is your business, and you should think about that before you True. post it. So, like let's my get videos. First one here, I've never seen this girl before. Guys, this is for the guys. Hear me out. So, when you're out, whatever, you see a pretty girl and going up to her, trying to talk to her. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. Like, you look good, blah, blah, blah. She's probably going to get annoyed. Hi. Whatever. Hear me out. Instead of doing all that, go up to her. Just tell her, I just wanted to come over here and tell you that you look good. And walk away. Walk away. Give her a genuine compliment and walk away. I guarantee you, she will come find you. That's not, that's not bad advice, but I think that more works if they're attracted to you. If they see you and they're attracted to you, then yeah. I've actually heard that same thing from a lot of different people. It's like the first time I heard someone say that. Um, okay, I see where she was going with that. And I think in a dream world that would work, right? But I think even if a guy does that, I believe that there are a lot of women that would still not approach. Um, mm. I know this is 2021 and more women are approaching now than probably ever before, but I still think it is incredibly rare. Courtney, it's 2023, what's wrong with you? It's almost like this video was recorded two years ago. I have never seen a girl approach a guy in public, so I think the best thing a guy can actually do is be bold, shoot a shot, and read the room. If the girl's not interested, all right, we walk away, we move on, it's fine. But I really don't think a lot of the time, again, I wish this was true, I think she meant well here, but I don't think many women would go find that guy in the club or approach him. Yeah, okay, so... I know what you're saying, Courtney. I know what you're saying, Courtney. But I think what really happens is you go up, you say that, and then you just see, you gauge her reaction. And if she's like, oh, or she gives you like some sort of a positive reaction, then you might say something else. Or she might say something that you might build off of. Or if she doesn't seem interested, then whatever. But. Yeah, I, I like how far are you walking away? Like you're not like are you gonna like walk all the way to the other side? Ah, eh, probably not. Then then I would agree she probably wouldn't follow you. You probably have to be like somewhat close by, you know, like at a table over or something, and you're just like, oh hey, I thought you were I don't know if you want to tap her on the shoulder, but you just be like, like I thought you were really cute or something. Or or in a place where you could at least like make eye contact. Then you can see if she keeps looking over and that would be like a sign. Of course, there are exceptions. It could happen sometimes, but again, the exception is not the rule. So I don't know about that one. Let me know what you guys think down below, but I don't think that is the reality, unfortunately. Wish it was. I wish it was easier for all of you guys because I know a lot of times women don't approach, but then complain about how you approach them, which is a little bit frustrating. So yeah. This is Benjamin Daly. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He has like blown up on TikTok. I've had a lot of content creators reach out to me and tell me that they really like him. Um, so we'll check this one out, but I've never really watched any of his videos before. And I don't think he has a YouTube channel, so. Girls be like, I like him. Why can't he make the first move? Why don't you make the first move? I couldn't agree more. Okay, but why is that perfect with what I just talked about? Sometimes it makes me laugh. Before I even watch this, it just, she got all aggressive in that too. Why can't you make the first move? Huh? <laughs> but the first move is not the same. Courtney, you're going to say like it, it dovetails to what you're saying. But if a guy comes up to you and says, Hey, 
I, I think you're beautiful or something. I just want to let you know that that's the first move. So it's like the door is already open. It's the icebreaker. Girl skin sometimes, and I'm not saying this to try to sound like I'm taking men's side, but as a woman, I know sometimes how picky we can be about things. If you're no. you know, out women and you picky? see a cute guy and he's not approaching you, I don't think there's anything wrong with approaching. I wish more women would do that. Like I said before, I don't think that's the norm and I feel like most women would not approach. But I also do think it's a little bit more common than it used to be and women should. Okay, anyway, I'm rambling here. Let me see what he has to say. Here's why. You probably say hi to a lot of people that you don't know that well. But the moment you see someone attractive, it becomes the first move where you attach a result to the conversation. The result being, will they like me or not? Fear of rejection, judgment, and desperation only exists because you're approaching the conversation with a win or lose mindset. The key is to remove this notion of the first move and start making conversations like you would with anyone else where the outcome doesn't matter. If you like this tip, yep. follow for more. You learn that as you, as you age in the dating world because in the beginning you're like oh my god this girl i like her and it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then after you get like rejected like 30 times you're just like well this one's probably gonna reject me too but I, look i i like how she looks or i like whatever something about her so you go up there and you're like well i'm probably gonna get rejected but i'll try this anyways and then you try it and then because you didn't put all your hopes in it and you're just like yeah just you know she seems nice go say something and then if she, if she likes you, she likes you. If she rejects you, she rejects you. And you're just like, whatever. <laughs> it just ends up being like that. It's when you build all this stuff up that it makes it worse. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in the other person's mind. They could be having, like, the shittiest day. They could already be in a relationship. They could be a lesbian. Like, you don't know. You're just like... <laughs> It's just like go up there. Maybe they don't like uh, white guys. I don't know. Like, that's very true. We only care because we care about that person's validation and what they're going to think about us. Makes you more nervous when you're talking to them. Makes you freeze up. It makes you really question everything that's coming out of your mouth. Um, it just really creates all of this unnecessary stress. When yeah, and it's so like just to follow on to this point, it's like in the relationship. Uh, in the relationship I'm in right now, and like, cause I've just like learned to be this way. I'm not trying to do like anything different that I would normally do. I'm just being myself. And I'm like, if she freaks out at it and she's like, oh my God, he was so uh, emotional or like he, he was so excited in the moment and it was like so passionate about something and he got like really energetic. Cause sometimes I do that. Or I'm just like, I'm so into something. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, get all like hyped. And, I, and that might like off put somebody. I'm just like, you know what? I don't care. Like if she gets off put by that, then clearly she's not the right person for me. And I'm not going to go through life, you know, st stuffling that down. So she's like, oh my God, he's, he's all excited again. It's like, no, I'm just going to be who I am. And if you just approach them, like you would talk to some random person at a coffee shop or someone yeah. next to you in line, it becomes a lot less stressful for you and you don't put all that pressure on yourself. So I did a video all about how to talk to women and one of the pieces of advice I gave is to just talk to them like they're a normal human. By pedestalizing this person and being like, oh my gosh, they're so attractive, they have to like me, I have to say everything right, you are self-sabotaging. So if you just go in and talk to them like you would anybody else, it makes it a lot easier for you. So that was really great advice actually. And I almost can't believe it, there's a good piece of advice in one of my TikTok videos. Crazy. All right, next up, I have a guy named Confidence Chris. Yeah, Let me teach you one cool. of the most powerful techniques in dating. Listen, a lot of the times in dating, you're going to... Why is... Why? Why is he laying down his bed shirtless? And we're like looking up his nose. Okay, guys, I did notice he has a nose ring, but it is the one on the side. It's not like the bullhorn one, so I can deal with that. I can deal with it experience people that are hot and cold right one week they're texting you like crazy the next week they're being short with you and they're not giving you so much attention what's our first emotional response to that it's call them out right say hey listen i don't understand why you're not hitting me up or hey listen i think i need to take a step back from this situation because it's really bothering me let me tell you something the really worst thing that you can do is verbally tell someone that their lack of attention is bothering you even if it really is deep down telling them gives them all the power the reality is, even if you're feeling that way, 
You need to take actions and stay silent. You can't say shit to them. Just take a step back with actions. Don't say your moves to somebody. Because let's say they don't even, they're not giving you attention because they're actually busy. Then it shows you're patient, right? And that's better for you. And then let's say they actually don't give a fuck and they're not giving you attention that way. Their true colors are going to come out at some point. So you're better off keeping your mouth shut. He's basically talking about mirroring. It's like, whatever that person's giving you, you kind of give them back sort of that same level. Right? Or did I miss it? Hmm. Okay, that one was interesting. I agreed with some of what he said, but I also think that when you're talking to someone and when you're, you know, getting to know them, maybe you're kind of in the courting phase, you're dating mm. uh, or you're about to date, I do think it's also important to make your intentions clear and for both people to be very honest about that. I hate the whole like act like you can care less, playing games kind of stuff because when you're in a relationship, you should be able to vocalize the things that bother you or the things that make you upset without that other person you know, ghosting you because of that, right? And maybe it's about wording it in a way that doesn't make you seem needy or clingy. So maybe it's not saying you haven't texted me back in an hour and that really bothers me because yeah, that does come across really needy and clingy. But if this person hasn't talked to you in three days, you haven't heard a single word from them and you guys were hanging out all the time or, you know, on your way to being boyfriend and girlfriend, mm. do you really even need to say anything at that point? Like there, be there comes a point when it's like, regardless of what you say, you should be watching their actions instead of you know their lack of what they're saying to you so in that situation it would be very clear that maybe this person isn't giving you what you need and that's okay and it's up to you whether you vocalize that or not but in the end it really doesn't matter it's like that was good advice what she gave i mean that's pretty much it you should be able to to vocalize what you're what you need Right, especially if it's getting serious. If it's in the very beginning, it's like a little bit different. But definitely, if it if you're starting to like the person and stuff, definitely be able to vocalize it. You guys are getting more serious. Like when someone ghosts you, and you know that they've ghosted you, and you still feel like you need to say something. That's a you thing. That's a bruised ego thing that you're dealing with, and regardless of if you say something or not, it's probably not going to change the outcome. And the reality is that they still ghosted you. So. I don't know. I, I can totally see where he's coming from and I think he made a couple really great points in there. But also, it should not be you avoiding something to make sure that other person doesn't view you in a certain way. If you feel the need to say something, really dig into why you feel that way. Is it because your ego's bruised? Is it because you feel like you need closure? Is it because, you know, a million other reasons why? Also, I would recommend if you're someone who gives another person so much power over you, really analyze that and try to get to the root of it because if someone's not texting you back, it should not ruin your day. <laughs> I'm walking away now, you're not answering. You haven't answered in two hours, I'm walking away. <laughs> There's people in married relationships, you know, they're like, they're married and they text their partner like a sexy message and six hours later, like they haven't answered and you know, cause they're busy at work or whatever. Would you consider this toxic? I will put up the toilet seat before he comes over so he knows he wasn't the only guy over today. Oh, that's stupid. That's so dumb. That is so dumb. And why would you want to seem like a... I was going to say a slut. <laughs> it's a slutty. Like, why would you want to make it seem like that? Is this your boyfriend? Or is it... I guess it has to be some random dude. And then... Oh my... God, that's so stupid. That is so stupid. So stupid. You seem slutty, or your boyfriend's like, what are you, cheating on me? It doesn't make sense. What is the reason? Why are we doing that? The fact that you would go out of your way to put up a toilet seat to make someone think that they aren't the only person <laughs> that's been at your apartment? Yeah, that's toxic. It's crazy. And if you feel the need to do that with the person that you're with, or the person that's coming over, that's a deeper issue. And I know it's a joke because a lot of times TikToks are jokes, but also keep in mind that there are young impressionable people watching that, that mimic. The Courtney, Courtney, we can't worry about the young impressionable people. Come on. Cause then we can't do anything fun. Come on, Courtney. We can't worry about all of them. 
We're never gonna be able to do anything. You're spoiling. You're spoiling the internet. The behavior of people they see online that maybe don't know that it's a joke. I just can't get on board with any kind of toxic, weird, like mind game kind of stuff. And I would never go out of my way to make someone feel bad. Like imagine if you went over to a guy's house and he purposely put fake eyelashes on his counter so that you thought that there was another girl there. But they're really- Or he's just Captain Jack Sparrow. Fuck. Really wasn't. What is the reason? That's just crazy. Ay, ay, ay. Fake eyelashes. I gotta ask you on a formal date. Okay, y'all wanted this, so here you go. So I have a question for my ladies out there. If you like a guy and a guy likes you, right? You guys aren't friends with benefits. You guys don't have this agreement on what your relationship is, right? You're new to each other and you want to go out, but yet he hasn't taken you out. Why do you feel like you need to A, throw subtle hints that you want to go out on a date or B, you need to trick him to take you on a, take you out on a date? Because I feel like as a woman or anybody, that should be a red flag right there. Like, why isn't he doing that? Because last time I checked, in the dating process, you went out on dates, which is why it's called date team. Now, I could be wrong. Like, if I'm missing something, please let me know. But I just feel like that's a red flag because any guy that's truly interested in a girl, especially for the long run, is gonna wanna take her out on a date. But I could be wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff Morrell. I think he just stated the obvious, which was good. But I, I don't know what the first part of the, what the woman was trying to say and then she got cut off. Or whatever your name is. He said, I can't, could not have said it any better. Why are we trying to trick people? Why are we trying to see things for what we want it to be and not what it is? Look at someone's actions and what they are actually doing, not what they say. You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. So if you really like a guy, and you're dating, but he's never taken you on a date, and it doesn't have to be an expensive date. It could be a picnic. It could be a walk in the park. It could be a coffee. You can't be dating if you haven't gone on a date. It's not possible. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're not dating if you never date. If you're just sleeping with each other, then you're sleeping with each other. It's not a date, unless you're doing like a movie date at, at your place on the couch that involves fingering. Like, <laughs> coffee date okay we won't even get into that because there's some girls who say that that's not a date and oh God. to that i would say you want to be with someone who you would align with that's literally what you should do for your very first date is a coffee date the reason is it's simple right it's cheap right you get to talk it'll be in a nice place where you can talk and do whatever it can be short like 30 minutes or under an hour. So if you don't like the person, you can leave and you didn't sink a bunch of money and a bunch of time. Like, it's just so ridiculous. Like for both parties, it's good for both parties. And if you're constantly like, oh my God, I'm always going on coffee dates. Yeah, that's because you're always going on the first date. So maybe that's a you problem. Like, <laughs> oh my God. So if someone doesn't think that that's a date, then you probably shouldn't date them, right? Anyway, that's a whole totally different topic. But see things for what they are. See what is in front of you. If someone is not taking you out, they probably don't like you. We shouldn't be trying to manipulate someone or be hot and cold, play hard to get, do all these crazy tricks or whatever it is to try to get someone to act different or be different or like you. Watch what someone does, watch how someone treats you, and that's all you need to know. And if they're not, taking you out on dates. If you are dating, but you're not actually dating, maybe they're just using you for hookups and you would like to be dating. If you don't want the same thing, you have to be able to walk away from that or they're just gonna keep doing it. Do you think all of a sudden they're just gonna take you out on dates? No, not unless you walk away and express and show that you're not okay with that behavior. Remove yourself, just walk away. Don't try to trick them and play all these mind games and do all this crazy stuff, that's a waste of your time. He said, I really couldn't have said it any better than he did. If two plus two is four, right? And five plus five is 10, okay. What the fuck is this? <laughs> he basically said, if you like him and he never texts you back and he treats you like crap, why do you like him? I wish that that was not the reality, <laughs> but it is. Oh my God, but why is that the reality? What are you, then what are you basing your like on? How do you like somebody who's just not into you?
It doesn't make sense. Because if they're not, if they're clearly giving signs they're not into you, why are you like thirsting for them? They're not into you. If they liked you, they would message you because that's what people do when they like you. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand people. Is I think a lot of girls are into guys that they know are not good for them. Whether that be, you know, they're addicted to the chaos of it. I mean, there's a ton of deep-rooted issues sometimes behind the reasoning why people are into guys like that. But also, sometimes guys are into really crappy girls. So, you know, they go after a girl because she's beautiful, but she uses him and treats him like crap. They're still into her because of the way she looks. So sometimes it's the same thing for girls. Sometimes girls will know a guy is not good for her and they continue to go after it anyway to try to change him or win him over or, you know, maybe he'll be different from me and to that I would say watch what people do see things for what they are and not what you want them to be I think 99% of all situations like this could be avoided if people would just see what is in front of them and not the potential or what they want it to be I think sometimes we get so caught up in that what if that we don't see things for what they are and we turn our blinders on and we see what we want to see and we ignore all the red flags you know when something's not right for you and normally those things you see in the beginning are the reasons why things end in the end and if you only like people that treat you like crap there's probably something going on and you should get help for that because that's not normal apparently there are some women on tiktok giving other women some bad advice about how to get guys to commit this advice often includes trying to make them jealous of the other men that are trying to pursue you and i guess it's supposed to create some sense of urgency you know because you might go to johnny's house tomorrow if he doesn't ask you to be his girlfriend but you know what that guy's thinking that guy's thinking well if you're willing to go see johnny tomorrow i must not be that special to you so why don't you just go do that trust me a man will drop you instantly but a boy will stick around because he thinks that he might still have a chance to get the one thing that he wants so ladies if you want the man in the relationship stop with man. you stop playing games i can't say it enough stop playing games oh my yeah and she ain't talking about video games she ain't talking about no fifa no league of legends okay i don't know oh, would she like slide did she like slide into the video she's like Whoosh. i don't know it felt like that's what was happening god wish i could give that girl a hug she said it. She said it best. Stop yes. playing games. Let's games move on then. Immature, insecure people. So if you don't want to be insecure or immature, and you don't want to attract someone insecure or immature, do not play the games. Because like she said, a man would walk away from that. He'd be like, I don't, I don't have time for this girl. I'm not playing these games. A boy. A you get what you give, and you give what you get. Right? Is that, is that how that goes? A young, immature boy, maybe not even young, maybe just an immature, insecure boy would stick around trying to win her over, the same as a girl would. A woman who is confident and secure in herself, if a guy was doing that to her, would be like, um, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a second choice, and I want to be with someone who wants to be with me, and I don't have time for your games. I'm walking away from you. But someone who maybe has trauma, someone who is insecure, immature, manipulative, would stick around trying to win that person over. So... I would highly advise you all to stop playing games. And as I've said so many times in my channel, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If you play these dumb games with people, you're going to end up with someone who is not good for you, who is unhealthy, who continues probably to play the games the rest of your relationship. And if they're doing this from the very beginning, it's normally a little window into what the rest of your relationship with them would look like. So really think about if you wanna go forward with that because I guarantee you'll be really sick of it. Mm. Ding dong. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this actually did happen to me. Yeah, this actually did happen to me. So, because I'm going through a divorce, but like as soon as there was a couple women who found out like that I'm getting divorced, they were it immediately within like, well, not immediately, within like a couple of months. They were like messaging me. They're like, hey, I heard you're getting divorced. Oh, that's so sad. You should come by. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> Not interested in them, but I just thought it was funny. And to some degree, it's true. Normally, I try to be very kind 
and nice. I cannot stand girls like that. The homewreckers, the girls who are waiting just for that divorce paper to be signed, the side pieces. If you're a woman and you know that you're doing that, it's one thing if, you know, the guy lies and you have no idea that he's seeing you on the side or he's married, but it's very hard to do that now with social media. It's a lot harder than it used to be. And I've actually known people that have lived double lives and this has happened to the women that I know and they're like totally bamboozled and have no idea. But if you are a woman, there are so many people living double lives because I covered in my other video, uh, the um, on, the OnlyFans video, I'll link it here in a line card, but like literally 90% of people on there are married. It's 100, 153 million accounts. It's married people. And they're generally not, I mean, some of them might be saying they're married. But I imagine a lot of them aren't saying they're married. And then you got like webcam girls and then you got affairs and dating. Like the amount of infidelity that happens in this world, whether you want to call OnlyFans infidelity or not, I don't know. But it's like, it's a lot. And we all pretend like we need to be monogamous. Monogamous is the way to be. And there's so much cheating going on. Like people are cheating left, right and center like in different ways. It's just wild. And you know that you are ruining someone else's relationship. You know you're being a homewrecker. You know you're a side chick. You know that if this girl found out, she would be destroyed and so upset. You are not a good person. If you know that you are intruding on someone else's committed relationship, you are actively putting yourself in that situation. I have no sympathy for even saying this, but you are awful. As a woman, I cannot imagine doing that to another woman. I would never, no matter who the guy was. If Justin Bieber knocked on my door and said, hey, you wanna be my side chick? I would say, um, no, you're married to Haley Bieber and I'm not ruining your relationship. I would say a lot of women aren't, but there are a select few that want to steal who they consider good guys away from their partners. I mean, even when I was married, there was, um, like there was one woman in particular, like, she knew I was married. She met my wife and I swear to God, she's all, she was always like, can I talk to you privately? And I'd be like, yeah, what is it? Go talk to her. She's like, yeah, I really like you. I'm like freaking married. I wasn't interested in her anyways, but just, you know, it's, it, and she kept bringing it up. I was just like, seriously, seriously. Like, are you that desperate? You have to try to go for me and I'm married. Like, are there no other people out there? This, this goes back to that previous point of people not responding to your stuff and then you're still thirsting for them. It's like, it's like that. It's that same mentality. Yep. And also I'm in a relationship, obviously, but that was just a silly example. But some of these girls are so desperate. If you are knowingly doing this, girlfriend, you're not it. You need to work on yourself because there's some deep insecurities in there. All right, and we're done. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the commentary and the conversation, and we will see you on the next one.